today we're talking about how long COVID, PEM, post-exertional malaise, POTS, MECFS, all these kinds of symptoms are just results from transient capillary leak syndrome. And today we're going to go through a paper describing some of the details of this in humans. This paper called Microvascular Capillary and Precapillary Cardiovascular Disturbances Strongly Interact to Severely Affect Tissue Perfusion and Mitochondrial Function in Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Chronic Fatigue Syndrome Evolving from the Post-COVID-19 Syndrome. Capillary blood flow is impaired not only by pathological blood components, but also by prothrombotic changes in the vascular wall and the filling dysfunction and the expression of adhesion molecules in the capillary. They're talking about systemic capillary leak syndrome at the microcapillary level, all right? These disturbances can finally cause a low capillary volume and even capillary stasis. You know how we talked at the microcapillary level when the glycocalyx is lost and how those microclots happen and you can't pass blood through those microcapillaries and so it puts pressure on specific ones. Vasoconstrictor or vasodilator influence exists in which sympathetic hyperactivity and endothelial dysfunction play a strong role, causing the constriction of resistant vessels and the precapillary sphincters, which leads to a fall in capillary pressure behind the sphincters. This is what is happening with POTS. You get up, you don't vasoadapt, you don't constrict properly. This is what we're talking about here because you're leaky. The interaction of these two precapillary cardiovascular mechanism causing a low capillary perfusion pressure is hedodynamically highly unfavorable in the presence of capillary stasis, which is already caused by the pathological blood components and their interaction with the capillary wall to severely impair organ perfusion. That's essentially saying the nutrients can't get to the capillaries in the organs, so the organs are disturbed of their essential nutrients to go in and out. We've talked about that. The detrimental coincidence of microcirculatory and precapillary cardiovascular disturbances may constitute the key disturbance of the post-COVID-19 syndrome and finally lead to MECFS in predisposed patients because in turn worsens the generation of reactive oxygen species to close a vicious cycle from which a patient can hardly escape. This is essentially what Martin Paul PhD has been saying for years with the peroxy nitrate cycle, what's been going on here, but he hasn't been able to quite describe it as endothelial dysfunction that causes the muscular issues as well. They've only been talking at a mitochondrial level. Now we have a whole structural basis and that's what systemic capillary leak syndrome is all about and why it causes post-exertional malaise and chronic fatigue syndrome. Let's go on because I've also been talking about how this affects the beta adrenergic receptors and some people have what's called adrenergic POTS. And we can look at some diagrams to describe it a little bit clearer. When you lose your glycocalyx layer, then those adhesion molecules can stick. But with an intact glycocalyx, those platelets and other adhesion molecules do not bind to the endothelial system. So it's important to have a very healthy and rich glycocalyx. So we're talking about POTS here, how the tone of the blood vessels don't constrict well, so it causes leakage into the surrounding tissue, junction dysfunction, leaking junctions, essentially. Your body reacts to that constriction by producing catecholamines, that turn on beta adrenergic receptors and excreting those catecholamines to those beta adrenergic receptors is telling your blood vessels, Hey, please constrict. You're not holding on correctly, holding on to the blood volume correctly, especially when you're trying to do something vasoadaptive, like get into the hot shower, you lose that ability to vasoconstrict. And so not only do you have a spike in catecholamines, but you also have the vasodilative properties of heat. So you pass out because you get a loss of blood pressure because it's leaking into your tissue. That's why there's like a lot of blood pooling. You're producing catecholamines to produce that squeezing as an adaptive response. But that also turns on platelets and platelets have 
beta adrenergic receptors on them as well that causes more clotting. So it creates a whole vicious feedback cycle. They're not talking about it in this paper, but that's a, a different paper. They're saying that the immune system was suppressed in numerous ways, such as the adaptive immune system was not turning on while the innate immune system was stuck creating oxidative stress. Microcloths can impede capillary blood flow and even induce capillary stasis, and that's significantly worse than organ blood supply. Capillary blood flow is not only impaired by pathological blood components, but also by changes in the vascular wall, such as endothelial dysfunction and the expression of adhesion molecules in the capillaries, which lead to an enhanced adhesivity of blood components to the vessel, which aggravate the flow disturbance. If you've been watching any of my videos, you know that that happens once the glycal calyx gets broken down. So they're calling it pre-capillary cardiovascular disturbances. I like to call it junction dysfunction, which is more expansive. But I like what they're saying here. Separately or jointly, these different pre-capillary cardiovascular disturbances have the same effect. They lower the capillary perfusion pressure, which means that you leak into your, your tissues. In a direct comparison, long COVID and ME-CFS patients were found to exhibit similarly impaired endothelial dysfunction, indicating a potential vascular component in the pathogenesis of these post-viral illnesses. Yes, they are post-viral illnesses. The components of the blood and the inflammation of the endothelial cells, the blood vessel cells, those interact to keep the blood vessels healthy. So they both cross communicate the blood and the blood vessel wall. And we know that's because the glycocalyx helps regulate both of them through its easy water and SOD and all that fun stuff. Primary microcirculatory capillary disturbances and precapillary cardiovascular disturbances constitutes the key disturbance of post COVID-19 syndrome and finally leads to any CFS and predisposed patients. And you know why people are predisposed because we've talked about this now. This is a big thing for POTS here. The causes of hypovolemia are thought to be renal hyperexcretion with re low renin, renin paradox and microvascular leakage. Do you see how this is working now that we've talked about how when you leak, you secrete hormones to try to constrict and it creates this paradox? Here is the proposed mechanisms of induction of the mitochondrial dysfunction as a result of the combined effect of perfusion disturbances when you're leaky disturbances, which are already shown in the other figure that we did. And an insufficient of the sodium and potassium pumps activity in the skeletal muscle. All right. So this is how you're creating all those catecholamines. Essentially, this is what causes PEM. You know how we talk about you being in a self-reorganizing complexification system because you can talk in feedback cycles. Well, this gets caught in a feedback cycle, which one thing needs to be healed first before the rest can be healed. Beta-2 adrenergic receptor dysfunction is assumed to be present in MECFS due to autoantibodies or desensitization to chronic stress in MECFS. So I've been talking about this kind of stuff for a while now. It's called junction dysfunction. So if we look at the full map here, you can see how all this stuff leads to transient capillary leak syndrome here and the endothelial cells cause leaky junctions and the microcapillary loss with the microcapillary loss, you have vasoadaptive loss and vascular POTS. We talked about vascular POTS today. We briefly discussed hypoxia, but you could see the mediators that are released. And we talked about the mitochondrial respiration and the issues that cause post-exertion malaise. Like this video and share it if someone has any of these issues. I do consults with this and I also have a program called Junction Dysfunction that covers these topics. I had post-viral illness and I recovered from it. Be sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay beautiful.